Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunerie Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunerie Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. and welcome to Radio Friends on Monday, October the 18th. A pleasure to have you with us. And I've got two of, two of my favorite people today. Uh, they're representing caring hearts and hands of Columbia. Dr. Joe Moscato and uh, Doreen Ryden. It's a pleasure to have both of you here. Thank you. Let's start, Doreen, with you. Uh, talk a little bit about caring hearts and hands of Columbia, what it is. Well, caring hearts and hands is an organization that is set up so that people who are dying and want to die in a home-like atmosphere but can't for whatever reason, you know, they're, uh, they're alone, they don't have family, they're homeless, many reasons why they can't. Uh, this is a place where they could come and stay for the last 30 days of their life free of charge. Uh, and that's wonderful. Yeah. And it is caring hearts and hands. Yes. Dr. Joe. How did you get involved with this? Oh, I know her. Yes. <laughs> she and dragged, you are a very... She dragged me into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you about Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe Moscato is a very caring, <laughs> loving person, a lot of compassion. And you two make a perfect team with this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to say a little bit about, about this program itself? The, yeah, really. The, you know, the problem is, is, is that there are certain pl uh, problems that people have when they're dying. For most people, the best place to die is just home with their family, right. with hospice. I mean, that's going to be if you have a death that's expected. But the problem is there are some situations that come up that just don't work. You might have little kids in your house. You may not want to have that happen in your house. You may have other issues with with uh, caregiving or just, you know, sort of a little bit of a change of what you want. I mean, there are many reasons why it could happen. And so options are the really thing. You know, how can you really get more options in terms of helping people in these last days of life? That's what you really need. Yes. And the last days of lives are really an important time for the person who is moving on and for the loved ones. Mm -hmm. And to be surrounded with caring folks like mm -hmm. you makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does. If, if, if uh, people want to help out with this, what can they do? Well, they could go to our website. We have a volunteer page on that. So they could volunteer to work in the house when it's up or help to take care of the people. They can donate um, to the cause so we can get the house up and going. Yeah, yeah. So what is your timeline? Well, our goal is by next quarter of yeah, next year. So like late winter area to early spring. And the location? Well, we don't have a location yet. We haven't bought a house because we don't know when we're going to be able to get up and go, and we need the money Okay. to, to So it's it. all open, and perhaps somebody listening or watching would want to donate a house. Well, I think that would be wonderful. If, be if wonderful. somebody wanted to do something like that, mm -hmm. they can go to the website? Yep, and they can. my number's on there. They can give me a call, and okay. we'll be happy to talk with them. Now— you're having a Lights for Love memorial event, uh, and the purpose of this is what? You the purpose of that is there's been so much despair over the last couple of years with COVID, so many deaths. People are just kind of dropping left and right, including healthcare workers and other people. Um, so we wanted to bring some light into the community, and the way we thought we could do that is by people lighting luminaries and we're going to put them all around stevens park um and the luminaries are in honor of people who have died. passed on Correct. already and that really is a very it's, it's very special because i did that with my mother w with the cancer walk mm -hmm. uh and you remember that was in fact missouri cancer associates was one of the sponsors mm -hmm. of that and what was it was that at stevens park also Oh, it moved, it's around. Several locations. moved around every year, yeah. so I'm trying yeah. to remember which one was that. But, but it's such an, an, an inspiration mm -hmm. to see all those luminaries uh, lit, and you know that 
they're in honor of people that you love and people that you care about. Mm -hmm. This is going to be when? It's going to be November 6th at 5.45 to 6.45. Okay, it'll be at Stevens Park. And what do people need to do if they want to be a part of this? They can go to our website. Each luminary is $10. Um, so they can order the luminaries out of there and pick them up, fill them, and put them out. Okay. And you, you have to be present to, to do this yourself then, right? If they can't be, we can put some up. Okay. Them. Yes. All right. And check-in is at 530. It'll be at the Gordon Shelter, and there'll be programmed and music at 6 o'clock. Great. Right. Okay. And again, if, if, you, if you want more information on any of this, it's www.caringheartandhand.org. Uh, all that information will be on the website if you want to make a donation or if you want to sign up to help out. Uh, Dr. Joe, I'd like to I'd like to turn to you uh, because you have so much experience in in all of this in people's lives. Mm -hmm. What do you say to a loved one or a person who is entering the final stages of their life? How do you prepare for this? Um, in a loving, caring way. Yeah, I think it's important that you ask people what's important to them, you know, what they want to do with those times. I mean, a lot of people are looking at the negative part. They're looking at you know, dying and, and unfortunately pain and sometimes and suffering. But, you know, there's a lot you can do about that. You can really help people with that. But then you have to say, what's important to you? I mean, things like writing journals to people, writing who do you want, what do, what do they want, what do you want them to remember you for, what kind of information can you pass down to children and grandchildren. So if you get people thinking in that realm of what can you do, what can you do, what was important to you, it gives them sort of some focus to say, hey, let's spend this time doing this and passing this information on. I mean, you develop a whole life full of experiences right. and knowledge, and that's so so important to people in your family that you just want to pass that on. I mean, and I'm it, sure there are many things that your mom told you that oh yeah yeah that you know you remember and treasure. Because and you have to accept. I remember the the most important thing you have to do is accept the dying process. Mm -hmm. I will never forget. You told me that I needed to give my mother permission. Mm -hmm to die mm -hmm. because she was hanging on and you said she she really shouldn't be alive at this point because she and he you asked me have you given her permission i said no he, he said give her permission mm -hmm. and when i gave her permission it seemed like that was the turning point yeah. and and you have to accept it on, on both the person who is dying and the loved ones around but see she's thinking about you see it's always that issue about what can she do for you yeah she was giving she wanted you to be comfortable with it right and when i gave permission right. it she did and thank you dr joe moscato you're one of a kind and doreen Martin, thank you for coming by today and be careful I, about the website too because it's heart and hands because of caring heart and hand yeah. Dot org. yeah okay thank you Thank you so much.